o'clock says it's two o'clock. Uh, welcome to the cabinet meeting as usual. This is being broadcast via the internet and archived, so you can look at it afterwards. <coughs> can I remember, remind cabinet members to use your microphones and to switch switch them off when they've done? Uh, one agenda, one first thing which isn't on the agenda is obviously uh, uh, David Slater. It's with great sadness that I report the death of County Councillor David Slater, who died on 29th of April, age 70. He was first elected to the council between 2009 and 2013 and was re-elected in 2017 to represent the Syston Ridgeway Electoral Division. David served on various scrutiny committees and also as a cabinet support member. He was also a member of the Leicester, Leicestershire and Rutland combined fire authority. Mr Slater served on Charnwood Borough Council for 17 years, including as leader, a position he held for seven years. Can I ask uh, cabinet members and members of the public to stand in silent tribute to Councillor David Slater? Thank you very much. <coughs> Another tribute will take place at the, at the next uh, full council meeting. Our next agenda item is apologies for absence. I have none. Minutes. <coughs> I move that the minutes of the meeting held on the 10th of April 2018 are taken as read, confirmed and signed. Is that all agreed? agreed. Thank you very much. <coughs> Urgent items. There are none. Declarations of interest. I understand Richard Shepherd has one. Richard. Thank you, Chairman. It refers to item five on the agenda. Um, I will declare a personal interest leading to bias in this item as a member of Charnwood Borough Council, and accordingly, I will not participate in the debate on this item and will leave the room whilst it is considered. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Microphone off, Richard. Sorry. <coughs> okay, next agenda item, enabling growth. 2018-19, pages 11 to 38. This report seeks approval of the County Council Enabling Growth Plan for the aforementioned years. Tom Pennell will introduce, is that right, Tom? Or is it you, Louise? Tom, okay, over to you, Tom. Yes, thank you. The, the paper seeks approval for an updated Enabling Growth Plan covering the next 12 months. Um, the Enabling Growth Plan is the Council's plan in support of economic growth. Um, back in 2015, um, the Cabinet approved a plan covering the period up to 2018, and the achievements of the Council during that period are summarised in paragraph 16 of the paper and in more detail in the new plan itself on, on pages 23 and 24 of the pack. These achievements include major transport infrastructure provision, superfast broadband rollout, um, investment in workspace, uh, supporting people to secure jobs and training, and advice and support to businesses. And um, as part of that, £116 million of capital infrastructure funding has been secured from the government and others. A one-year roll forward of the Enabling Growth Plan is proposed so that the Council can wait until a local industrial strategy for the area is in place before a longer-term plan um, is prepared for con Cabinet's consideration next year. It's clearly important that the Council's uh, plan is aligned to the local industrial strategy and indeed to the emerging strategic growth plan. Uh, the proposed new plan is summarised in paragraphs 18 to 22 and attached in full as, as an appendix to the paper, um, and it focuses on delivering the stronger economy outcome set out in the Council's strategic plan, which you approved before Christmas. There's a particular focus on Leicestershire having a highly skilled workforce, on having the right infrastructure in place, and on creating an attractive business environment. Uh, the detailed priorities are set out in the plan at pages 33 and 34 of the papers, and will require the um, involvement of all council departments working together and with partners um, if they're to be achieved. Um, the plan will be supported by the development and implementation of a detailed action plan and will be reported against the performance indicators set out on the last page of the plan. Um, the recommendations are as on the order paper. 
Thank you, Tom. I'll move the recommendations. Uh, we did well with the with the last one. A lot of high end high end achievements that you alluded to, and as you also said, this is only a one year roll forward because we're working on the local industrial strategy, and awaiting the emergence of the SGP. So uh, I'll formally move. Now, leader, I'll second that. Um, I think there are the interesting year will be years time. This will keep us going until the local industrial strategy is is, uh, is published, and that work still to, is, is, is ongoing. No other speakers moved and seconded. All in favour? Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Louise. Richard's going to leave the room now while we do this next one, which is the proposed development at Quorn of a solar farm <coughs> and light industrial units. Uh, we've, please note we've received comments from Hillary, that's Hillary Fryer, which were attached to the order paper Mark 5. John, you're going to present, are you, John? And then <coughs> we'll speak about it, and then after it goes here we're only deciding the principle here the actual planning application will be determined by DCRB I understand over to you John thank you uh, leader uh, yes yeah, so I would like to um, ask for cabinet approval to uh, prepare and submit a planning application for 60,000 square foot of light industrial units and a 10 megawatt solar array on land at Barrow Road and Pool Farm between Barrow Fonsor and Quorn the industrial units uh, will generate just over £420,000 a year for the authority and the solar farm being a 10 megawatt um, array is estimated and planned to generate um, enough electricity to generate 3,000 homes um, which will um, generate an income to the authority of £720,000. Uh, whilst we fine-tune the, the development costs, we would just like um, the support to progress the, the planning application. Um, as uh, you quite rightly said, Leader, uh, this application will be dealt with by uh, the County Council, as it is land that we own and land that we will develop ourselves and hold. Um, I would just like to clarify points of paragraph 32, um, where we say that the County Council considers the sites are in highly accessible locations, etc. Um, I would just like to make the point that those comments are from the, the property department and not necessarily the views of planning officers at the county. They will come to their own conclusions on the planning application on its own merits. But if we can have um, support for the planning application, estimated cost of £150,000, um, that support would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Great, thank you, Byron. Yes, I mean, on, this looks this looks like a really, um, really good opportunity for us. Um, requires a substantial investment, sixteen million pounds, uh, but the benefits are, are enormous if we can make it work. Now, still quite a lot of of work to be done, analysis work to be done. First of all, can we can we connect it to the network? I'm, probably can but we've got to do, ch ch check that we've got to find customer for electricity and we've got to make sure the economic case works and of course we've got to get planning permission and I noticed the remarks of, uh, of Mrs Fryer um, which I note and we'll, we'll respond to those and deal with those so at this stage I think it's worth, worth spending £150,000 to take it to the next stage uh, so I'm very happy to move the uh, three recommendations on the order paper and I agree with Byron entirely, so I'll second it. Anybody want to speak about solar farms? Probably not. Best let the DCRB determine it now. So moved and seconded. All in favour? Thank you. Agenda item six is the state pensions for women born in the 50s. The uh, report asks Cabinet to consider concerns based by the pressure group called WASPIS who argue that women born in the 50s have been hard hit by changes to their state pension. <clears throat> As you can remember, this issue was considered by County Council in March, where it was decided that the Cabinet should consider this matter. Uh, can I thank Pam for the hard work she's done in meeting the uh, uh, WASPy women? Um, I think Chief Exec's presenting the report, and I'm going to call Pam, who's done all the work on it, to speak. Chief? Thank you, Chairman. As you say, um, in March, the full council asked Cabinet to consider the concerns 
raised by the pressure group Women Against State, State Pension Inequality, known as WASPI. Um, their concerns arise from changes to the state pension age made by the government in 2011, and their concerns are set out in the report, I hope, fully. Um, you referred to what Mrs. Posson said at the last council meeting. That is referenced in recommendation 2B. Um, what she said then was in regard to discussions Mrs. Posson had had with the local pressure group and about some practical support which the council is able to provide to the group. Um, the All Party Parliamentary Group is trying to bring about legislative change to support the local pressure groups and indeed the national pressure group and the council's support for that approach is set out in the recommendations which are on the Green Order paper. Thank you Chief. Pam? Uh, thank you Leader. Um, whilst we do have every sympathy with these ladies, the Lib Dem motion to the council would not have succeeded in advancing the WASPIS cause up the political <coughs> agenda. This is a national issue and it's therefore important that our MPs are lobbied and, the, and also the government. We feel that engaging with the all party group of MPs on this issue at Westminster is the way forward and that is exactly what the cabinet will be doing uh, on May the 1st, which is today. Um, and so I um, propose this uh, motion be accepted. Thank you, Pam. Louise? Yes, I'm happy to second the motion. Um, I do believe the all-party parliamentary group is the best forum, um, and so I'm happy to uh, support the recommendation. Okay, I've got no other speakers. Again, thanks to Pam for the good work she's uh, undertaken with the WASPI women, who, who I have uh, great sympathy for. So, uh, moved and seconded. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Agenda item seven, national planning policy framework consultation proposals and supporting housing delivery through developer contributions consultation response 67 to 82 Tom you're going to introduce it yeah yes that's right thank you um, yes the government is currently consulting on the revised national planning policy framework or NPPF and on how housing delivery can be supported through developer contributions and this paper recommends responses to each um, the proposed comments on the NPPF uh, are set out in paragraph 17 to 58. Um, I'd like, to, there's quite a lot of detailed comments there, but I'd like to just quickly draw attention to two specific points made. Um, on the housing delivery test, paragraph 17 to 19, there is a concern that the proposed new approach, which is intended to increase housing delivery, um, could have the opposite effect. Um, there is a concern that developers could hold back from developing allocated sites to cause delivery to fall below the proposed new threshold and thus make it easier for other non-allocated sites to, to receive planning permission uh, as a consequence of that. As well as slowing down delivery, um, the test um, could also encourage an unsustainable distribution of housing provision um, on sites not well supported by infrastructure. So the response urges a reconsideration of, of that test. On, on, delivering, on delivering a wide choice of quality homes, paragraphs 28 to 34, um, the council or the cabinet is recommended to welcome the introduction of a new simpler method of calculating housing need um, but it's proposed that the government be strongly urged not to require the local uh, the Leicester and Leicestershire um, partner authorities to adopt the new standard immediately given the substantial progress that's been made in developing a strategic growth plan in the area and that plan is based on the robust housing and economic development needs assessment um, which comes up actually with very similar figures to the ones that would be, would be generated by the new standard test. So it would it wouldn't serve any purpose to to to, to change the, the the method, but it could cause quite a lot of delay to, to to the process. The proposed comments on the developer contributions consultation um, are set out at paragraphs 59 to 63. Um, just two 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 very quick points. It's recommended that the proposed removal of section 106 pooling restrictions be welcomed, but that the, the, but the, the change should go even further to create uh, some greater certainty for negotiations. And it's also recommended that the government be requested to allow the proposed strategic infrastructure tariff to be made available to areas that don't necessarily have a combined authority or joint committee. Um, it seems um, not right, if you like, that areas like Leicester and Leicestershire shouldn't benefit from such a tariff as well as those areas. Uh, recommendations as on the order paper. Thank you, Tom. You make some good points in there. Byron? 
yes, this is uh, this is going to be bring about quite quite a substantial change in our approach to, towards forest planning, and particularly, of course, it's have to be uh, followed by the district councils, who are the main planning authorities uh, involved. But I do agree with uh, very much with uh, 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 Tom over this one, the, over the issue of the uh, in, in paragraph 19. Local planning authorities can't actually deliver any houses. It's only builders that can do that. And so putting too much pressure on local authorities um, is actually going to be counterproductive because there's so much, so much they can do. And I think the government have really got to understand that before they bring in two dr draconian measures. Um, and I think the other two points that made, made by Mr. Pennell are actually also uh, as are very valid, as indeed are the rest of the points made in the, in the in the paper. So I'm very happy to uh, uh, to uh, support the uh, uh, the uh, response we make. So I move the recommendations on the order paper. And I agree with Byron, and I agree with you, Tom. I think it's a good report and makes the points we need. So I'll second it. I have no other speakers. All in favour, please show. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Agenda item eight, enforcement program for underage sales of tobacco products and aerosol paint products, 1819, pages 83 to 92. Uh, you're going to introduce this, are you, Gary? Head of Regulatory Services, in case anybody doesn't know him, although he's been here a while. Okay, Gary. Thank you, Chair. Uh, it's an annual report uh, brought to Cabinet uh, so we can meet our statutory obligations uh, under the legislation referenced in the report. Essentially, this legislation requires Cabinet to approve an enforcement program relating to underage sales of tobacco and aerosol paint products, and these are set out in Appendices A and B. <coughs> Paragraph 13 explains the Trading Standards will discontinue some of its preventative work, in particular advisory inspections that solely deal with tobacco product sales. However, the service will continue to target its resources on tackling those businesses that from an intelligence-led pers perspective are more at risk of making sales of tobacco to children. Paragraph 16 provides an indication of the level of the enforcement activity in 17 and 18. The illegal supply of illicit and counterfeit tobacco products continues to be the main focus of our enforcement activities because these under-the-counter sales threaten legitimate businesses, offer a cheaper, unregulated and alternative method of supply for adults and children. 41 complaints were received alleging the supply of illicit and counterfeit tobacco which identified around 25 Leicestershire retail premises selling these products under the counter. Leicestershire Trading Standards over this last year, financial year, executed around 12 entry warrants which resulted in proceedings being instituted against 15 defendants. Referring briefly to the aerosol products, the legislation requires trading standards to maintain a dialogue with the district councils as a method to identify any hot spots in terms of aerosol sales. And this clearly links to social behaviour, namely graffiti. There were no specific problem retailers of aerosol paint products identified by the districts. Uh, for, for action this year. We seek Cabinet's approval for the proposed enforcement programmes listed in Appendices A and B. Thank you, Gary. Well, this forms part of my portfolio, and I think you do a really, a really, really good job uh, down there. Um, un under counter sales are not only illegal and illicit, but the, the tobacco, the, 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 the legal stuff is bad enough, but some of the tobacco that's in these these uh, illegal packets is even worse and some of the uh, levels of nicotine and, and things in the illegal ones, they might say two milligrams on the side, but some of them can be like 20 milligrams per, per cigarette. So it's really, really important that we do uh, clamp down on those. Uh, can I just ask you one quick thing, which I wrote down here, uh, Gary. Does this also cover sales of acids and bleach, just as an aside? Uh, no, it doesn't. Um, we do carry out enforcement activity relating to the licensing of various products. 
Um, but in terms of test purchasing exercise, no, it doesn't. But we would always respond to any complaints that would um, implicate in terms of safety of products. Thank you, Gabriel. As you say, this is the annual report which we have to approve. I think you do a damn good job down there. I'm happy to move it. Uh, Ivan, uh, next. Uh, thank you, Leader, and I'm very happy to second it, particularly um, in respect of the safety of children and young people, because the people who sell this stuff do so to make money without any regard for the consequences. And it's only a few weeks ago that I had a telephone call to let me know that a young woman had collapsed having sniffed aerosols and it was in a coma in hospital. So there's a very serious underlying message here and all power to your elbow for being able to crack down on people who don't play the game correctly. Okay, moved by me, seconded by Ivan, all in favour? Thank you, Gary. Nine, award of contract to Carers Trust urgent action taken by the Chief. This is on 93 to 96. It does concern the urgent action, and John Wilson, the Director of Adults and Communities, will present it. John. Thank you. Yes, the Discharge Response Team is a service that's provided by the Carers Trust. It was originally commissioned and procured by Uni um, University Hospitals of Leicestershire to provide a bridging service for people who were ready to be discharged from hospital, but where the care package, the domiciliary care package, wasn't yet in place. That was funded through non-recurrent monies that were given to UHL um, for winter pressures and last year they approached the local authority to ask whether or not we could fund the service on an ongoing basis um, and as it provides essentially a social care service um, we thought that that was uh, a suitable use of the improved better care fund that we were granted from government last year to enhance social care services. So we agreed to fund it during 2017. <coughs> It has proved very helpful in maintaining our delayed transfers of care performance and we want to take a further opportunity to evaluate the service and consider whether or not we procure it on an ongoing basis during 2018 and therefore um, we asked the approach to the Chief Executive who agreed an exemption to the current procurement rules to allow that to happen during 2018. Thank you. Very good John. I'll, I'll move we, uh, whatever we do. What are we doing? Approving the retrospective action. Yeah. And Byron's going to speak next. Um, yes, and I second the uh, decision to take uh, take action at the time and ask, and ask the Chief Executive to act. I don't think we've got anything else to add. I think what he did was in the best interest of the County Council. All in favour, please show. Thank you. Thank you, John. <coughs> Ten items revered for evidence scrutiny, none. Eleven items which are urgent, none. Oh, that's it, we're done. Thank you.